Namaste, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor of Light Meditation. And it's Monday, and we wish all of you a fantastic week. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Sohokok Sri Mahaguj Mailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your guidance, help, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, so uh, first, I want to apologize. It's supposed to be half an hour ago. Um, <laughs> things happen, and uh, we continue, continuing on. So the lesson today is actually quite simple. Uh, I've used this Chinese proverb before. It's just something that we want to remind ourselves. Unless there's an opposing wind, a kite cannot rise. Okay, let me repeat it again. Unless there's an opposing wind, a kite cannot rise. And it goes back to... Whether you like it or not, things do happen in life. And what you do with it, in other words, our response to it will determine if we go higher, you know, it's a metaphor that we do better, or you spiral down into something not good. And it's all about one thing and one thing alone. It's attitude. It literally is attitude. The question is, do you let the wind oppose you? like an obstacle, like a, like a challenge. Actually, to use the word challenge means, oh yeah, I can do better. <laughs> so it's all about attitude. So if you look at it, a person will look at a wind that's stopping them. A person with a the right attitude will think, oh, it's good we have the wind. Now the kite can go higher. See the difference? Two different people. One looking at the wind says, oh man, I'm going forward. This, uh, it's such a... It's time fighting against something. However, the other person said, hey, that wind could be something that propels my kite so I can go higher. That's all. That's the metaphor. Very, very simple. You know, every time you want to give up, you go, oh, there's an opposing force. You can say, wait, how can I use this to actually go higher? And if I look at our lives, me personally, the times when I find an obstacle, but then I find myself, oh man, what else could go wrong? And it just spirals down. Or if my attitude is like, wait a minute. Hmm, there must be a better way. There is always a way. And that's one thing that has to be tattooed to your brain. There is always a way. And that's one of the things I learned um, growing up. Life will give you what you're willing to settle for. If you just settle for whatever is in front of you, that's it. You settled. But if you say, no. Not, not acceptable. There's something better. And I look at the people in my life that have inspired me a lot. And of course, first one is my teacher, Grandmaster Twa Kuk Sui. You know, at that time in 1987, when he launched Pranic Healing to the World, nobody knows what Pranic Healing is. People know about prana. Maybe there's a word pranic, you know, that's around. But the system itself is not known. And most healers, when they say healing, oh, let me transfer energy. That was the most common way people do it. They, people call it magnetic healing, uh, spiritual healing, divine healing, but it was not a systematic. So he went ahead and did <clears throat> many, many years of research, looking at things energetically, look at different patterns, come up with protocols that you and I can use. And that's what I learned. And that's what I used to fix my wife's broken hip, which the doctor said they'll take three and a half months to heal. She was walking in two weeks. And I had no clue what the heck I was doing. I was even doubting it. And yet it worked. I remember coming to the United States, um, 19, at that time it was 1988. I, no, 88? Jeez, so many years. I tried introducing panic healing and people go, what's that? And I remember having a conversation with Master Cho. He said, less than 20 years, panic healing is all over the world. When I first told a friend of mine about it, that I want Pranic Healing not just to be in the Philippines, but spread worldwide. He said, you're crazy. And look at that as an inspiration. And of course, a lot of you know, I have the great opportunity to also work with Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins and you know that, I've said that many times already. You know, when the pandemic happened, his main seminar business is literally interacting with people, thousands of people. And that just overnight just shut off. Most people would spiral down in depression and feel like, oh, you know, zero, lose everything. And he was. 
His business was that particular one. But in three months' time, it turned around. He said, there is a way. And now it's virtual. It's even reaching even more people. How many times has it been that we had an obstacle and we looked at it like, let me turn this around or let me use this. And that's why another quote I love to use, which was, I heard this in one of my, uh, our daughter's, I think, graduation. Somebody said, quoted someone. Again, I apologize. I should be better at names, but some smart dude, at least we're giving him credit. They're super smart. They said, when there's a rock or a boulder in front of you, whether it's a stepping stone or a stumbling block, is dependent on how high you rise, how, how, how high you raise your foot. So if your attitude is like, this rock in front of me is a stumbling block, that means I raise my foot just a little bit, I fall over. In other words, it, it allowed me, no, that rock made me feel defeated. But if I look at this rock, oh yeah, it's a big rock. Hmm. If I just get on top of it, I can actually use it as a springboard to go even higher. So the same rock is now something that could push you to higher heights. It's all about what? Attitude. I'm sharing this with you because, uh, you know, something is always happening. Oh, the economy, there's inflation, there's COVID. There will always be something. As the Lord would have said, everything is subject to change. Or if you go somewhere in the United States, you know, I forgot, every city says this. Yeah, if I go there, I go, hey, it's cold over here. Oh, how come it's hot? They go, wait 10 minutes, it'll change. That's what the Lord would have said. Everything is subject to change. So everything is changing, moving around outside of the eye. How we let that affect us is dependent on one thing and one thing alone. Our response to it. You're going to complain about it? You're screwed. <laughs> I'm just telling it like it is. So I'm like, oh, you're hurting my face. Well, you don't get off your, you know what? You're going to stay there. I guarantee you, whatever you're going through, there's someone worse there off than you are and got over it and became better. Simple as that. So if there's an opposing wind, are you going to let that opposing wind to push you back? Are you going to use the opposing wind? Oh, yeah, I'm going to ride it higher. In plain English, stop complaining. People like to complain. It's, it's the economy. It's whatever, the government. It's my parents. It's, it's always something outside people like to complain about instead of saying, you know, there's always be something outside of the eye. What I do with it will determine if my life gets better, get worse. Energy follows where you put your attention to. You know that already. So you put your attention on something that's going to get worse, you're going to get it. You put your attention that, say, hey, I'm going to make this better. I'm going to put my mind, my emotions, my thoughts, my body, my soul into this. Nothing can stop you. If you get an opposing wind, I'll ride it higher. You get a rock in front of you, I step on top and go even higher. And to summarize, what did Tony Robbins say? Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. One little word changes everything. That word for you implies that whatever this is in front of you, you can use it to make your life better. You can take anything happening outside of the eye and use it to your advantage. Period. Full stop. And it's interesting that oftentimes, I know you're not going to like this. I'm going to preface it already because some of you are going to say, blah, 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 whatever, you know, who cares? People like to complain. Simple as this. When you're getting comfortable, you're backsliding. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to cruise. Mm -hmm. Because I don't like stress. You've heard me this so many times already. Say it so many times. Stress in the right context means you're moving forward. When the kite hits an opposing wind, there's a certain resistance or stress, but it also propels it higher. 
So stress is something you can harness, not something that brings you down. And it de it's dependent on one thing, one thing alone, attitude. Who is that? Zig Ziglar, I think uh, one of those uh, sales uh, motivators from 30-something years ago. I remember um, listening to the guy, and he loves using certain words. He goes, your attitude will determine your altitude. That's my Chinese version of a southern accent. Anyway, <laughs> your attitude will determine your altitude. And look at it. There's always going to be people who are in, have every disadvantage in life. And yet they made it. They became successful. And you're going to have people who are born in with everything else. There is resources, connections, and they screw it all up. Take drugs and die. You go figure. You have people with talent. People with resources. But just a little bit of obstacle, they give up. They take certain substances. They screw up their life completely. And you have people that have every disadvantage. No money, not much connections. But they have determination to be successful. They won't take no for an answer. They made, they made it happen. Simple as that. Yeah, but you know, I'm still waiting for my spiritual download to give me inspiration. Uh, are you sure you're waiting for inspiration or are you just being lazy? I know that sounds harsh, but it is what it is. Are we really waiting for a spiritual reason? Or are we just kind of too much in our comfort zone? So we're just waiting for hopefully an angel appears and say, go there. I stopped waiting a long time ago. I stopped waiting because I go, it ain't happening to me. The way my teacher says is constancy of aim and effort. You first have to have an aim. What do you want? There has to be something you want. There has to be an objective. It, either better health, better relationships, finances, spiritual awakening, whatever. There has to be something. The day you don't have a goal or something to aim at, you die. Maybe not physically dead, but you're basically a shell walking around. But if you look at people who have something they're fighting for, something they're uh, trying to aim They'll do whatever it takes. If I need to make body healthier and stronger so I can accomplish that goal, I will do it. If I need to study something, if I need to change this, change that, everything is about that objective. No objective, that's that. You're cruising, you're dying. <laughs> Period. I don't know what else to tell you. I apologize again because I've had to do this several times. People always have this thing that, yeah, you're too harsh, you know, I'm just a homebody, I love, whatever. Anyway, so... All those people who can handle the straight talk, you have my deepest apologies. The ones who can handle it, get off your ass, do something great. Period. Accept, who said this? I think it was Bruce Lee who said it. Accept no limitation as a limitation. A circle without a a circle without a circumference. Ooh, that's deep, man. Imagine a circle with no circumference. So why is it a circle then? It's just implying a circle is, it's even, not even, it's, <clears throat> it's all around you. But there's no limit. You keep pushing it. I mean, just as an example, then we'll do our meditation. You know, just being around Tony Robbins, you know, I have the opportunity to be with him during the different events and uh, you know, even in, before classes, after, after his events, and just talking to him, talking to his wife, Sage, you get to see why people become successful. It's attitude. It's attitude. You know, they say, okay, I want to open up this market. We want to do this. doesn't mean that they don't hit any snags. They had to hit snags. I mean, when you, you're putting together an event with 30, 40, 50,000 people online, something happens. I mean, I remember the first time, first or second uh, time they did the, uh, UPW, lightning struck one of the antennas in the studio or something like that. All power went out. The internet went out. But they have a backup. And they had another backup. Did they say, oh, well, you know, maybe destiny. None of that crap that people use as an excuse. 
just went for it and became successful. Oh, something came up. Oh, this stream wasn't working. Okay, let's do it this way. It's not like, oh, it's a sign from God. No, if you have an objective, everything is propelling towards your objective. Everything. The good and the opposing wind. Use anything and everything to help you get to your objective. If you're that relentless, you are unstoppable. I've used that, I used that phrase with you, uh, what, maybe a month ago? If you're relentless towards your goal, you are unstoppable. It's people who give up too early and they use failure as, as basically it says, well, you know, it is what it is. I just kind of flow with it. If you have to go against the flow, you go against the flow. Whatever it takes. If you're relentless towards your objective, you're unstoppable. I'm not trying to give you a pep talk here. Most of you know that. If you want something bad enough. In fact, um, in sales, they always say, are you hungry enough? Okay. There's this guy, you know, every time we do this, uh, on Mondays, there's this guy who loves playing a windblower. Anyway, just let me change the sound. Hold on. Okay, I'll talk a little closer because uh, some people love their toys. You know, they cut the grass and somehow this just like, it thinks it's Rambo with a windblower. Uh, you probably can hear it. Anyway, so to continue with what we're talking about. When you have an opposing wind, just think of it as when you have an obstacle, that is something that is, in initial perception, it's stopping you. The key word, initial. So you look at it, okay, this is not working. Hmm, how do I use this to my advantage? How do I make this better? Oh, I try to sell this product to someone, they don't like it. Okay, maybe there's something I need to improve myself with. I'm trying to start this business. It's not turning out good. Oh, maybe I need to change my business plan. You just keep going. You just keep going. And that's the key of success. Okay? So, to continue what, what we're talking about here, let's talk about your ultimate, obje ultimate objective. Ultimate objective is... When all is said and done, when the body dies, what is your ultimate objective? Oneness with your higher soul, oneness with God, oneness with all. Enlightenment, if you will. Well, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not one of those, you wake up one morning, ding, I'm enlightened. Or ding, one day your body wakes up and you're a saint. Wherever you are now, it's a sum total of all the work you've done in the past, this lifetime and previous. So when it comes to spiritual practice, you don't meditate once and you reach your objective. I wish it was that simple. It doesn't work that way. It all goes back to the same, very, very same virtue. Constancy of aim. What is your objective? Constancy of effort. Now that effort is divided into several parts. Will effort means whatever your objective is, you won't stop till you hit it. Second is mental effort. And this is the part a lot of people in the spiritual path fall. That mental effort means you plan it out. What are the things I need to do? It's not one of those, well, today I feel like meditating. I feel like doing service. Or I feel feelings are not always reliable. They go up and down. You have to have a strategy. I'm going to do my spiritual practice. I'm going to keep my body healthy. Uh, that way you can sustain the spiritual energy coming in. I want to do a service to so generate good karma. Whatever. The mental effort involves planning. A lot of people on the spiritual path think meditation, you leave your brain in the car and just wait for a download. I wish it was that simple. You plan it out. Okay, I want to develop kindness and love. How do I do that? Oh, let me do service and healing. I want to develop... Uh, 
mental sharpness so I can understand deeper teachings, study more. I want to develop a stronger, healthier body. That way my body does not always fall asleep and fall over every time I meditate. Let me do my exercises and right nutrition and right rest. You have to plan it out. That's mental effort. Now, emotional effort is essentially making a commitment. That commitment involves, as they say in, <laughs> in UK, a schedule. A schedule. When are you going to practice? When are you going to meditate? When are you going to go out and do service? When, 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 when? When, answering the question when shows a person's commitment. Somebody tells you they love you with all their heart, mind, soul, and even love you from the heart of their bottom. <laughs> you go, oh, yeah? Okay, when are we getting engaged? Oh, uh, well, okay, that's not finished. The when is the magic word to test someone's heart. Then from there, physical effort means doing it. Implementation. Make sense? So, if you want to be successful for anything that involves constancy of aim, what is your target, and what are you willing to do relentlessly, relentless, relentlessly, mentally, emotionally, and physically to get to your objective. You cannot say, well, I don't feel like meditating. Okay, you do it once, you do it twice, before you know it, it's years before you do your practice. Finish. Okay? Anyway, I think you get the idea. So going back to the, the lesson here today, which is very, very simple. Ancient Chinese proverb, unless there's an opposing wind, a kite cannot rise. Whether the wind is something that stops you, slows you down, or it's something that takes you higher. It's all about your attitude. That's when people complain to me, oh, but you don't understand this. I go, yep, I don't understand it. But I finish it right there. He's always here, but you don't understand. I grew up in a family of this. Yeah, I don't understand this. Yep, you're right. I don't understand it. So don't bother finishing your sentence. Because whatever you're going through, there's at least 100 people who had it worse and got over it and became super successful. So yep, you're right. I don't understand it. So don't finish your sentence. I mean, I don't say that verbally. It's not nice. I just, in my head, I go, uh-huh. I just, you know, courteous, uh-huh, uh-huh. In the back of my mind, okay. Are you trying to convince me or trying to convince yourself? Are you trying to convince me that you're failing? <laughs> or are you trying to convince yourself so you don't strive harder? That's that. Shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father and Mother, thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tokoksui, Mahaguji Meling, thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your purifying light, compassion, purifying light, and soothing healing energy. We thank you in full faith. So it is. All right? Tap your crown. Put your hand like this. I am. Focus on your crown. I am that. I'm not the body. I'm not the emotion. I'm not the thoughts. I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that. The soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one with the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There's only oneness. Be still. Now open your hands in blessing. Visualize the earth in front of you. Just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. Be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. 
sadness, joy. Just visualize the earth in front of you. Be aware of your heart in your hands. Fill the earth with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, light and joy. So be it. Be still. Just keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your crown. Exhale. And stay there. Your crown is filled with so much golden light. Allow the golden light to just flow down through your hands and fill the entire earth. They say our souls are one, our spirits are one. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. May all beings be blessed, so be it. Just be still. Allow the golden light to flow down through you, flooding your home your workplace, the city you live in, the state, the country, let it spread throughout the surrounding areas, let it fill the entire earth. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale and imagine golden light even brighter than before, filling the entire earth. Now just say our hearts are one, our souls are one, our spirits are one. There's only oneness. From the center of the heart of God, may every person, every being on earth, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let every sentient being in every dimension and every direction be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and especially the willingness to do good. Blessings be to all. Just be still and let the blessings flow through us. May all beings be blessed. May all beings be blessed, regardless of race, religion, culture, gender, species. May all be blessed. In the visible world and the invisible world. May all beings in every dimension be divinely blessed. So be it. Be still. Blessings be to all. Now lower your hands, keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth, just be still. Imagine a golden flame floating above your head. It's a beautiful golden flame just floating above your head. Send a stream of love from your heart up to the crown and into golden flame. And just stay there. That beautiful flame is filled with intense golden light. Just look at that light. The image doesn't have to be clear. It's there. Look at that light. Simultaneously just say, I'm not the body. I'm the spiritual self. I'm that light. I'm not any of my emotions. I am the spiritual self. I am the soul. I am that light. I'm not any of my thoughts. I am the soul, the spiritual being of light. I am that. That I am. Just keep looking at that light. I am that. That I am. I am that. That I am. Be still.
and listen. Amen. still be aware of the inner stillness the inner peace and just simply let go let things be now Be still and know who you are. Gently, slowly. Come back to your body. Gently move your fingers and your toes. Slowly come back. Raise your hands in blessing again. Let's release the excess energies our bodies cannot absorb. Visualize the people you love in front of you. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, happiness, abundance, and prosperity. And with spirituality, so be it. May all of them and their lives be blessed. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light downwards into the earth. Fill the earth with golden light below you. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. May all be blessed. All right, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, thank you. To my teacher, Master Talk of Sri Mahaguji Mailing, thank you. Okay, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right, so we're done with the meditation. It was a short one, but if you're sensitive, you notice we cranked up the energy. Well, if you're new, we call it the special sauce. <laughs> Just put a little bit of extra energy to allow your crown to expand even more. So more divine energy comes in. Okay, we will see you tonight for the second act of light meditation. Hope everybody's well. We, ex we highly recommend you get up, do some physical exercises. Otherwise, you just space out. And remember the lesson, which is, again, quite simple. Whatever obstacles, whatever stuff is in front of you, use it to go higher. That's it. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. And we will see you in seven hours. Actually, six hours and 59 minutes, if you're the precise people. Okay, take good care. God bless.